Welcome back to the Rocket Animation Challenge with vPython, where we have upgraded our rocket to be a two-stage rocket. You just saw the stage separation of the first stage from the second stage. Um, the reason you want to have multiple stages in a rocket in real life is because if you just have a single rocket launching upward, there's a limit on how fast it can go and how high it can reach. But basically what you're doing with a two-stage rocket, and here we've got a graph to help you visualize this. This is the altitude of each rocket component versus time. Basically when you have this separation, what you're doing is you're basically treating the uh, the first stage as a new uh, a flying launch pad for the second stage. And so when the second stage launches, it's already got the altitude and the velocity of the first stage. And so the first stage can just continue on its merry way under the influence of gravity. It'll eventually come back down. But then the second stage flies upward like this and it starts a fresh launch. And so overall that allows you to have a more efficient rocket in total because you're basically giving this rocket an initial boost. In fact, that's why we sometimes refer to them as booster rockets. Let me show you how I've set this up in our code here. So now we have more quantities to specify. We have to specify uh, the mass of each stage and the fuel mass of each stage. So for example, stage one mass here, this is just the dry mass of the first stage and then this uh, second mass here, this is the amount of fuel that these uh, that the first stage carries. Then down here we have the dry mass of the second stage and the amount of mass that the second stage carries. Now I've made the numbers a little bit artificial here for the purposes of displaying. Usually you have more fuel in the first stage than the second stage, but for demonstration purposes that doesn't really matter. Um, and so when we calculate the mass of our initial rocket, we have to add three masses together. We have to get stage one dry mass, stage two's dry mass, and stage two's fuel mass. The reason we're including this fuel mass in here is because that fuel is not being expended during the first stage. So it's as if all of this is going into the dry mass of the first stage of the rocket. Basically, this is all the mass that is not changing. And then here we have the stage one fuel mass. This is the mass that during the first stage is changing. And then the first part of our code proceeds the same way as before. We animate this rocket. Um, we don't really have to change anything about it because the rocket mass now incorporates the stage two masses as well. So we don't have to change anything about this. And basically when we reach the end of that loop, when rocket one's fuel mass runs out, we get to enter stage two. We get to make the separation. I've put in a print statement here so that you can see where the stages separate. So if I go back over here, I can see the stage separation occurs at three seconds. Uh, which is of course what happens uh, here. You can see that the green curve picking up and made the curves a uh, different color so that we could see them. But basically that's the point at which you see uh, the, the stage one begins to flatten out here. So there's, a, there's an inflection point right here where the thrust gives out, but that's where the stage two picks up. So you end up with a little bit of a kink here if you take going from this red curve to the green curve. There's a, a, a little bit of a, of a change in the concavity of the curve there. But the way I'm accomplishing the stage separation is basically to clone the rocket. So rather than have a piece of the rocket separate off, I'm just going to create a smaller rocket. I'm doing that using vPython's clone function. Clone is a pretty cool function because it allows you to create a duplicate of an object you already have, which is especially useful when you're working with these compound objects because compound objects are pretty complicated to put together. So this just creates an exact clone at the same position as the original rocket. Now, one of the things I discovered is that when you set up a clone like this, it doesn't copy all of the attributes that you assign. It only copies the default attributes, like the size and the position. It doesn't copy this angle that we set up or the velocity that we set up or uh, the masses that we set up. So I had to manually uh, add those onto Rocket 2. Not a big deal. I've also made the Stage 2 rocket of a smaller size. I just made it a half. I could make that the proportion of masses so that it actually reflects the different sizes of the rockets. I'll probably do that in a future version. But for right now, a half is fine for demonstration purposes. And then down here, we set up the mass loss rate. Um, I have them set up as the same for right now. You can obviously, you know, change those to make them different because you'll probably have different thrusters on each of these stages. Um, and then we change the camera to follow Rocket 2 instead. Um, you could comment this out if you want to follow Rocket 1's descent back to the ground, but I thought it'd be more interesting to keep the camera locked on Rocket 2 at that point. And of course, as we saw earlier, we've added a new G curve here. So I've got a green curve to show me the position of Rocket 2. 
And so what I've done at the end of this loop is I have the position of rocket one being shown and the position of rocket two being shown, just so that we can see what's happening to the two stages. And then in this loop, it's basically a copy of the previous loop. I just had to change all of the rockets into rocket twos so that we're animating rocket two instead of the original rocket. We do wanna keep track of the original rocket though. That's why down here we've got um, an Euler Cromer loop set up for rocket one, where we have the force on the rocket, we update its velocity, and then we update its position. And like with the propellant, uh, we're not gonna keep track of it once it uh, gets to the surface. So once it gets to the surface, it has landed, it'll be recollected, and we're not gonna worry about animating it anymore. And so I think this is a pretty neat demonstration of how a two-stage rocket works. You definitely get a sense of how uh, Rocket 1 is helping Rocket 2 launch. You can definitely get a sense of that from here where the thing uh, just takes off from, the, where the green curve takes off from the red curve. Um, so as always, this code is available in the description below if you wanna play around with the numbers, see how high and how fast you can get Rocket 2. Next time, what I'd like to do is take an actual historical rocket's specifications and put them into the code to see if we can model uh, the launch of an actual rocket. I might be looking up a three-stage rocket, in which case all I'll have to do is copy this second part of the code and paste it back again, and we'll have a rocket three going off uh, to give us a three-stage rocket. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.